the Samsung Galaxy S4. We watched the live event, that crazy Broadway event, where they told the world about the uh, Galaxy uh, S4. Um, and, and I finally got one. And actually, I have two. I have uh, a U.S. version. This is the AT&T version. It's uh, the white version. Um, and uh, this is a four-core uh, Snapdragon processor with LTE capability. Uh, but the one I'm going to probably use is this. This is an unlocked eight core it's an exynos eight processors in here but what you give up of course with eight processors is oh there's shannon uh what you give up with eight processors is the uh lte capabilities this is actually one of many photo modes where you can freeze something so you were moving around the tv was moving around but i said i'm going to freeze shannon's head so you'll see your hands move everything's moving but your head didn't move you get one expression the whole time that's one of about a dozen gimmicky photo oh, that is so weird. photo modes in the camera and i have to say gimmicky is the word that comes to mind when you look at the galaxy s4 from in terms of specs it's pretty amazing you might say this looks a lot like a galaxy s3 it does it's very much the galaxy form factor they haven't change that hardly at all but it is a five inch screen they managed to make the screen bigger while making the phone slightly smaller by going all the way out to the edge you see the bezels are very thin um, the screen almost fills the entire phone one thing that is a little i don't know controversial i happen to like it but samsung still puts physical home buttons on their android phones you know the Google folks try to get rid of all buttons. They want the phones to be all screen, but we still have two capacitive buttons, a menu button and a back button and a single physical home button on the phone. I'm personally pretty used to it, having used a number of Galaxy Sam, uh, phones, both the Note, the Note 2, the Galaxy S3, the S2. Wow, quite a few, haven't I? <laughs> I'm in a long line. So this feels very comfortable to me. I actually prefer having physical uh, menu uh, and uh, back buttons as opposed to on-screen buttons. They don't take up as much room. Uh, it's funny, The Verge complained about this back. You see, this is brand new. I already got a lot of fingerprints. This is the uh, the dark-colored one. I, they, I don't they call it the gray mist or something. They have some silly name for it. It's, it's black <laughs> and white, folks. And they complained about the back, saying it was slimy. Well, it is a very smooth plastic back. But if you've ever had a Galaxy phone before, you're probably pretty used to it. There's a reason... Why plastic is a good choice. Last week, I compared it to the beautiful aluminum unibody of the HTC One. And indeed, the HTC One is a gorgeous phone, but it turns out plastic's a better material for use with the phone because for a couple of reasons. One, it doesn't impede the antennas, and your hand doesn't impact it as much either. So you've got NFC works better. The phone's antenna works better. But this is the real reason, from my point of view, you can pop it off. And this is probably the most significant difference between the HTC One and and the Galaxy S4, a removable battery, 2,600 milliamp hours, pretty pretty good battery, uh, but you can always pop in another one if you run out of space, plus room for an SD card. Now, you really need that on this phone because here's the bad news. While the HTC One is available in 32 and 64 gigabyte versions, you'll have to buy the memory you want ahead of time because you can't add memory after the fact. There's only one memory form factor for the Samsung Galaxy S4, a, a very meager 16 gigabytes. But the story's even worse because when you get the phone home, there's only about 8 or 9 gigabytes free. Most of that is used up by the junkware that Samsung has loaded this phone up with. This is an unlocked, there's no carrier on this phone, and it's still just jam-packed with Samsung silliness. And to only have 8 gigs free... On a, on a modern Android phone is a real issue, primarily because Android likes the apps to live on main memory. Now, I did put a 64 gig SD card in here. That means my music and my photos and media can live on the SD card, audio books and so forth. But I still have to have enough memory for my apps. Some apps can be moved, but for the most part, you want to leave apps on the main internal memory. Eight gigs, you'll have to check and see how many apps you've got. If you've got an awful lot, eight gigs might get a little short uh, after time. That's something to really keep in mind. And I think a legitimate criticism of the Samsung Galaxy S4. In terms of features, pretty amazing. This 5-inch screen is 1920 by 1080, 441 dots per inch. Very high resolution. Is it retina? Absolutely. Although, because it's Super AMOLED, it is a pentile display. And if you do look close up, you can see it's perhaps not as crisp as the IPS LCDs display on the uh, HTC One. The One definitely wins in terms of crispness and vibrancy of display. Uh, on the other hand, it's not exactly a poor display on the Galaxy S4. It is very crisp, very beautiful. Um, there's a lot of functionality built into this phone. You probably saw 
on the ad, there's a lot of sensors in here. I can wave at the phone. I can look at the phone. It sees my eyes. I can scroll through pages by looking up and down or waving my hand up or down. I could pick up the phone by waving my hand in front of it. To me, a lot of that is just pure gimmickry. I don't really see the need for it. Um, Samsung obviously is looking for ways to differentiate their phone from the competition. And certainly there is a lot of differentiation in here. When you look at the camera app, well, it just goes on and on and on. I showed you the motion feature, but if we look at modes, there's a animated photo. That's what I just showed you. There's rich tone HDR. There's the eraser mode where we can erase stuff that moves through a static picture. There's a panorama mode, pretty stock. A lot of Android phones have that. Sports mode means a faster frame rate. Night mode means a wider aperture. This is a 13 megapixel camera. Uh, that's probably about the highest you're going to see in a lot of, in almost any st standard phone. Best photo is kind of fun. You take uh, a series of pictures and then you could select one with a smile and so forth. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of an interesting feature. You've probably also seen them talk about the best face where you take five consecutive pictures of a group of people and pick the best face from each of those five for each of those people. <laughs> so you have one picture that has them all smiling. A uh, Sound and shot's weird. You take a static picture, but you have about three seconds of sound in the background. The drama mode's the one they've been take, talking a lot about it, where you have, it looks like multi, uh, multiple exposures as somebody moves through the frame. That's just the beginning, though. I mean, there's a ton more in here. All sorts of editing features and mode features, all sorts of uh, stuff going on. Uh, it might take you days to learn the camera. In fact, I have to point out that this is one of the few phones that actually comes with with manuals, three of them, a quick start guide, a handbook, and a full manual. This is more manuals than I got with Windows 8. And you know what? There may be more to learn than there is with Windows 8. This is one of the most le junk laden phones uh, I've ever seen. Now, one man's junk is another man's treasure. And if you are a photographer, some of these photo modes might be really valuable to you. The nice thing is, yeah, you have the wave mode and the don't touch mode and the look mode. And you don't have to use them if you want to take them out. All of these can be turned off off or on. In fact, I have to say, points to the Galaxy S4 compared to the HTC One for flexibility. There are so many settings in here. You can do so many things with this phone that the, the basic manufacturer settings have four tabs total, <laughs> and you could probably put in more. Look at this. If I, if I just uh, play with the notification center, I can add a bunch of different buttons to my drop-down notifications. Wow. This is, if you're looking for a configurable phone, this is very configurable. I mean, you're getting great hardware, removable battery, an SD card, complete configuration capability, a gorgeous 1920 by 1080 screen, up to eight cores. Removable battery means I don't have to worry about battery life, but I'm getting about eight to 10 hours. It's at least as good as the HTC One. And of course, whenever I buy a, a, a Galaxy phone, I usually buy one or two extra batteries so I can keep them in my pocket uh, ready to go. Uh, I think this is a very impressive phone that does things no other Android phone does, including a multi-window feature Feature that lets you run two programs at the same time. This is this is this is as close to a desktop computer uh, as you can get. I haven't fully configured this phone. This one just came today. This is the new unlocked uh, version uh, of the phone. Uh, one other big advantage, in my opinion, of the Samsung Galaxy S4 against the uh, HTC One, it's running Android 4.2.2, the latest version of Jelly Bean. Will only be the latest until. Google I.O. in a couple of weeks. But, hey, it's the latest today. This is uh, the HTC is running 4.12, a considerably older version. I like having the latest. And one of the things that 4.22 does is have live notifications in the uh, dropdown. Uh, I find those very useful. If you're an Android phone buff, if you've used a Galaxy phone before, I think you're going to like this phone a lot. You can customize the heck out of it, make it work the way you want to. Of course, I'm going to put a different... Uh, bootloader or a, a launcher on here. I'm probably putting Nova Launcher on here. Really customize the heck out of it. Uh, it's available on all the carriers. It's not much more expensive. By the way, somebody wondered about the cheesy life companion that you see when you first turn on the phone. You can absolutely change that to your name, to a clock, to anything you want. And Samsung provides these beautiful, see I've changed it to a clock here, uh, travel lock screens from different parts of the world. That are, oh, That's kind of fun. There. Yeah. <laughs> Where is that? That's Rome. Yeah, that's the Trevi Fountain, right? Um, other features that I kind of like, you were talking about uh, your, uh, your Fitbit. 
There's a Samsung Health app that takes advantages of the sensors in here. This has more sensors than I've ever seen before, including a humidity sensor. I know it's 34% humidity in here. That's the comfort level. It also has a walking mate that'll measure your steps. So I can see that yesterday, for instance, I took 2,912 steps. By the way, very accurate. I could set my goal just as you do with the Fitbit. Shows you distance traveled, number of calories. Um, that's a very nice feature, and it does it just because the accelerometer of the phone works very similarly to the accelerometer in your Fitbit or your uh, or your Nike Fuel Band. That's a nice feature. I like this health. They're going to have additional modules available. It does have a food tracker. You can enter in your weight and so forth. That's one of a number of additional applications that Samsung builds into it. Uh, a, a scanner, for instance, and and <laughs> just a lot of junk wear on here. But I couldn't wear it to the gym, though. You really? Well, I don't know. You might. You might. Uh, you should definitely get an SD card because you're going to want more storage. It comes with very little storage. It's very fast, very fluid, a gorgeous screen. Um, I have to say, on the pros and cons, on the pros, this is absolutely the best Galaxy phone ever made. Of course it is. It's the most recent. It's thin. It's light. Don't don't listen to the Verge. That's not slimy. But if you don't like it, there's a variety of cases and covers. I've I've ordered. It's not available yet. I hope it will be ordered uh, available in time for the review. A cover that has a peekaboo hole in it and can use a feature of the Super AMOLED that only part of the screen lights up. So you can actually put that cover on and see what time it is with the cover closed. Um, there's certainly a lots of ways you can make this back be more palatable if you don't like plastic backs. Since we always put our phones in a case anywhere, well, anyway, I don't really mind that it's a plastic phone. But yeah, okay, so that's a con. It's not quite as gorgeous as the HTC one. A lot, too, a lot of uh, junkware on here. I guess that's a con, although you don't have to use any of it. And for some people, maybe that's uh, something you'd really want on your uh, phone. Um, the screen really is beautiful. That's a definite pro on here. The removable battery and the uh, ability to add an SD card is a definitely a pro for this. Uh, a powerful, fast phone, state-of-the-art features. I think Samsung's got a winner here. It's a definite buy. But that's not the question most of you are asking. Most of you want to know... Well, which should I buy, the HTC One or the Galaxy S4 or maybe something like the Nexus 4, Google's own vanilla experience, which is half as much as uh, these phones. I bought this phone, by the way, unlocked for $800. Wow. $800. You can get it, depending on your carrier, for $200, $250, $250 subsidized with a two-year contract. Um, I would say that it depends on you. If you want a kind of a more... Uh, uh, customizable experience. The Galaxy S4 really is desirable in that regard. It is it is 422. It is a lot easier to get this to a pure Google experience uh, than the HTC One. HTC Sense really mucks up the works and in many respects can't be removed from here. Uh, they tie you down a little bit. On the other hand, in terms of fit and finish, there's, there's nothing more beautiful than the HTC One. Camera-wise, it's interesting. The HTC One has a 4-megapixel camera, the Galaxy S4 is a 13-megapixel camera. I think they're both very good cameras. Uh, they both have a lot of features. There's no doubt the HTC One wins in low light, and most of your photography is in low light. It's not in broad daylight, but inside, indoors. I like the camera a little bit better on the HTC One. I love the Zoe feature, which is not present on the Samsung Galaxy S4. So on camera, fit and finish the HTC One better. It really is going to depend on your personality. You want a customizable power tool for a real geek, you're going to get the Galaxy S4. If you're more desirous of something that's beautiful and feels good in the hand and is kind of a work of art, this is much more like an iPhone, the HTC One. Um, you're just going to have to decide for yourself. I'm keeping them both. That's my review <laughs> of the Galaxy S4. Uh, pretty nice phone, I have to say. Um, it's so much like the old Galaxy. I was a little less excited about it. I thought, I want a new form factor. I want it to look a little bit different. It doesn't. But on the other hand, it's like an old friend back in my pocket. and It's going to stay there for some time to come.